Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I decided to do a movie review as a tribute to one of the most legendary, great, strong, tremendous actors of all time, Rector Howe, who just recently passed away at the age of 75 due to a short-term illness that he had. Yeah. But hey, he did live a good life as years follow. Anyway, he has been best known for films like Nighthawks with uh, Sylvester Stallone and yeah, Nighthawks. Um, one of the best ones that he did that actually uh, brought in his performance was when he played uh, a replicant named Boy Batty, yeah, the leader of the leader of all the replicants in Blade Runner. I could definitely picture the Tears and Rain monologue in my head before he passed on. So you'll never forget that scene or any other. He also went on to do films like The Hitcher where he played a psychopath uh, hitchhiker you know, going after T. Thomas Howell, you know, pushing his buttons and all that. Um, he was in a movie called Wanted dead or alive, yeah, he played a, a bounty hunter, a badass one, you know, going after all these um, bad guys and everything. He did Blind Fury where he played uh, a blind man with a uh, samurai sword, just use it as a, as a walking stick too, but he does uh, defeat all these bad guys, yeah. He was actually a former Vietnam vet, which he explains why he got so blind after that because of the, the blast. Also helps out a kid who has uh, a fodder, you know, defeating the whole other bad guys. Anyway, even did films like uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. He uh, played a villain in that movie. Um, he did um, Split Seconds, plays a, uh, a badass uh, cop defeating all these uh, creatures and all this other stuff. Yeah. Definitely his best, too. And many others he has done in his entire career. Yeah. Um, and another film that he did that came out um, in the 2010s and I just picked this up recently at Dollar Tree for only what else a buck a month ago simply called Hobo with a Shotgun yeah <laughs> delivering justice one show at a time yeah a vigilante type of film but it's definitely a black comedy exploitation film as a tribute to all the other you know 70s and 80s exploitation movies <laughs> as you can tell because it does have that 70s uh, look to it with this badass um, poster art that's all embossed with the slipcover it's a two disc collector's edition with a digital copy included yeah for iTunes you can see the back you can see a critical quote Carnival of Carnage that says right there. You can see all the features that's included. You can see you know, Raptor Howe as a hobo with a shotgun, all this blood, and all these uh, screenshots, everything. Um, same here with, with the DVD case. You know, released by Magnets, which is an uh, art label for Magnolia. Okay, you see the digital copy which I have to cover and all these uh, available uh, Blu-ray titles from Madnits and Magnolia Home Entertainment advertisements plus uh, you can see the disc cover art so this one where you see Rector Howe as a hobo and <laughs> right here you can see this too special features that has uh, all these bullets flying around and blood. <laughs> wow, looks really cool. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna put this away. 
safe and sound. Put the slip cover back in, into the case. There you go. Yeah. Now, Hobo with the Shotgun was based on a fake trailer that Canadian filmmaker Jason the Eisner had created, which he uses uh, David Brunt's. Yeah, I think that was one of his uh, teachers, I think, or actually one of his friends, decided to actually do a, a short film that was going to be turn, turn into, uh, well, a, uh, <laughs> a feature length uh, film, mostly from the trailer. And the trailer, however, would later be shown through uh, a contest for Grindhouse, uh, which is of course um, the Robert Rodriguez and Quentin Tarantino's uh, passion project, which is a love letter to 70s and 80s exploitation films. Yes, uh, Grindhouse, which I saw in theaters uh, back in 2007, which had uh, a double feature of Planet Terror and Death Proof plus all these fake trailers uh, being played around and all these other uh, all these policy trailer openings and all that it's kind of like a drive-in feeder um, experience right there <laughs> or or loco uh, you know rundown feeder you see all this stuff yeah. yeah I mean of course you got Machete which Danny Trejo um, had played and that eventually became uh, a feature-length uh, film yeah, for Robert Rodriguez, and that was the first one to do so. This is their second film to do so for Canadians. Um, they bought it here in the U.S. as well, but only as a limited release. Yeah, that's a shame. We can't get anything these days. But it did actually premiere at the Sundance Film Festival, so and other film festivals joining in before they finally released it in Canada, and then later in the U.S. So this was only a three million dollar project that they had to work on, put together. But unfortunately, it didn't do much at the box office. Yeah, it wasn't a hit. I mean, I was even aware of that because movies like this never gets any attention. But, yeah, so. Let's uh, start with the review. It stars Rector Howe, Molly Dunworth, Brian Downey. Yes, Brian Downey from the TV show Lex, yeah, which aired on the Sci-Fi Channel. It's a Sci-Fi TV series, but it also has comedy and all of that action. Uh, Gregory Smith, yes, Gregory Smith from Small Soldiers and Harry the Spy. He also had the TV series with Missy Pernagrim called uh, Wookie Blue, Yeah, who plays a uh, cop on that show. Hard to believe that he would actually play an over-the-top character in this. So. Um, unbelievable. Nick Bateman, uh, Peter Summers, uh, Rob Wells, Jeremy Ackerman, David Brunt, as I mentioned, yes, he was part of the fake trailer, but he actually has a character that he played. Uh, Pasha Abrahami and George Strombolabopoulos. I don't know if I said his last name right, but it's, it's kind of hard. Yeah, it's written by John Davies, which the story was created by Jason Jesse Eisner, and it's directed by, once again, Jason Eisner. The movie begins when we meet a homeless man, nicknamed the Hobo, who's played by Rector Howe, who arrives on a boxcar train all the way into the city of Hopetown, which is welcome sign is being written in graffiti, known as Scum Town. Yes, the entire town is being run by a bunch of crime with um, 
Yeah, which also leads to um, leads to criminals coming around, you know, corruption happening with all these dirty cops. Um, they even got uh, pimps, um, drug lords, and pedophiles uh, hanging around the, the entire streets. But they also have a lot of homeless people around and utter innocents you know, staying there, already getting the killed. Well, it's being run by a crumb lord named The Drake, who's played by Brian Downey along with his two sadistic sons, Ivan and Slick, both played by Nick Bateman and Gregory Smith. So, once he uh, arrives there, you know, he brings in a shopping cart, just grabbing all the f stuff that he has, you know, so he can move on to, to a certain place that he could stay in. He spots a, an amateur filmmaker who's going around um, being the shit out of all of these homeless people, you know, so that way they can earn more money this way. Yeah. Um, so once uh, he was inside the neighborhood, um, he was being, um, he suddenly spots um, Drake's younger brother named Logan, who's played by Rob Wells, who's actually uh, already covered in blood and he got beaten up. And he actually had to wear a sewer top on his head. But as soon as uh, the Drake and his sons arrive, they're about to actually uh, put him straight into the manhole. And then decapitated him by using a barbed wire noose. Yeah, as Ivan and Slip just drives uh, through their truck and then his head just comes right off and that's where you know, blood starts to sprue out uh, up in the air like a fountain and then uh, the Drake brought in one of his babes yeah, in a bikini with all, all of that uh, fur that she wore and starts uh, dancing around it yeah, does that sexy dance you know, all covered in blood wow that was crazy so afterwards, um, he was planning on buying a lawnmower at a local pawn shop, but it only costs uh, forty nine ninety nine. So he decided to beg for change on the sidewalk. Yeah, actually uh, writing in a sign to actually hoping he'll be able to earn money this way. So he got like a lot of change, hoping that this will keep it up, but it isn't really enough. However, the hobo suddenly spotted uh, a group of punks uh, who just dragged in a homeless man as it sneaks into Drake's uh, nightclub. Inside you see um, both the brothers, Ivan and Slick, uh, and their hitchmen going around torturing and, and killing all these homeless people around, you know, like smashing their brains, the other heads or actually uh, using a hammer and, and just slams uh, their feet I mean and all that blood started to spray around you know they go around killing them you know brutally and graphically I mean all this blood and guts all of that um, and of course they even have an arcade around the entire uh, nightclub they even have all these bumper cars around and this is where Slick suddenly harasses uh, a boy named Otis after he was playing a video game. He actually snaps his arm out and just puts some coke in it so that way he won't feel any pain and he'll go completely high. Because Otis actually owes money to him. Until we meet a sexy but very um, strong uh very kind uh, prostitute named Abby, who's played by Molly Dunworth, who actually defends Otis and actually tells uh, Slip to let it slide. And this is where he says, I'll let it slide when my dick goes straight into your pussy. Yes, he actually says that. 
Yeah, going for vulgar, uh, going for vulgarity right there. So Slick prepares to kill her, but the hobo knocks him unconscious and telling him to watch his mouth and carries him directly to the police station so they can arrest him. But then he learns that the police chief, along with the rest of the cops, are totally corrupt. So they're now dirty cops and they just uh, took him with um, Slick and Ivan as he carving the, on his chest scum and just dumps him straight into the garbage bin until um, he meets Abby who actually helped him recover from all of this so of course um, Abby took him to her home that she lives all alone I mean, hoping that she'll be able to survive down in this entire town, but she needed she needed to make more money this way. Um, this is where he he actually this is where she actually helps him just try to find like a sweater, which is a, a bear sweater, to actually cover him up, you know, so keep him cool and have him lay down on the bed. So he could feel very comfortable after it just happened. Yeah, it talks the story about the bear. Yeah, which which was really nice. I love that monologue that he talks about. Where and I'm gonna start right there. Where Abby wanted to know about bears and this is where Hobo starts to explain it. Well Abby, I could tell you something about bears. Sure. The bear is a solitary animal. They like their space, they live in a magic circle. They don't mind if you like a mile away, but if you get inside their circle, they will maul you. If a bear claw will strike your face, it will take your whole face right off your skull, your eyes, your nose, your lips, everything. And you will die from it. And Abby says, wow, I didn't know bears could be so vicious. And this is where he continues. There's something else about bears not many people know. If a bear gets hooked on the taste of human blood, it becomes a man-killer. It will go on a rampage and has to be destroyed. And that's why you'll never hug a bear. Wow. Love that speech. So in the end, he did left that morning. He even uh, write in a message. I mean, yes, it even puts in a picture of a bear. So that was really nice and sweet. He decided to go directly to the filmmaker and decided to ha have him to do all these uh, degrading acts such as uh, taking out a bottle, smashing it onto his head, and starts to chew on it. All these glass shards. So that way he'll be able to earn money this way so he can go over there to the pawn shop and buy his uh, lawnmower that he wants so he can cut all the grass and be able to make more money so he can finally find a home for, for himself. But then he begins to spot a trio of robbers all wearing all these ski masks and, and even the Halloween mask around or makeup. They were about to attack a woman with a child as well as the pawn shop owner. He had no choice but to spend money on a shotgun. So he goes around you know, killing all the these free uh, robbers one by one in a very bloody uh, shot. You know, they, they really killed them completely. And that's when um, <laughs> he pays uh, the pawn shop owner and hoping that everyone will be safe. So that so now he becomes a vigilante, you know, going around killing all these bad guys around. Like such as the filmmaker, a pimp, a, a drug lord, all the even a pedophile who dresses up as a Santa Claus. Yes, who goes around kidnapping all these kids. So yes, <laughs> this was like a, a huge bloodbath around. So now they had news reports going around finding out who who the hobo is, but he's like saving justice, you know, delivering 
Yeah, delivering justice one show at a time. But the Drake, however, lets his sons loose and decided to go straight into the, the news station and, you know, kills a, uh, a news anchor and you know, trying to let them know, you know, where they could find um, the hobo. But first, um, Drake and Ivan actually took a whole bunch of kids into the school bus and started torching them with a flame floor. Yeah, burning them completely. They were all killed. Uh, yeah, because eventually they were friendly to hobos. Yeah, like if they love school or ice cream and all that. So anyway, they demand that all the homeless people out there should be killed. And the Drake joins them and ordered the hobo to be brought in. So this will become like... A, a massacre that's going to happen with all the city vagrants around. So as Abby was walking home, a, uh, a dirty cop attempts to rape her until the hobo kills him completely. He shot him all the way, like a couple shots, and then you know all these uh, chest bursting and you know, head blown off and all of that only leave up to his intestines going around. <laughs> yeah, that's why, you know, Abby had found a plan to actually uh, find a way to to get away from everyone else from seeing the, the hobo. You know, so they can hide out somewhere. Going back to her apartment. Yeah, she was all covered in blood because the hobo shot the cop. <laughs> yeah, he got out of it with his entire body filled with all this intestines from him. <laughs> Tells them, you're really sick. You know that. So their, their plan was to find find a way to pack up all of their stuff to go to a better place so that, that way they can escape from all these uh, criminals and everyone else around that's going after them. Until Slick and Ivan came by, yeah, with Ivan yeah, wearing his uh, roller blades or roller skates <laughs> it was, yeah, roller ice skates and so <laughs> like yeah and he, he even has a, a crazy line where it says well this is a nice day for skate rape and he just goes around uh, attacking both the hobo and Abby well with the hobo actually uh, taking out the, the toaster and and electrocuting the Ivan when when the toaster went straight into his ice skates, <laughs> and and then um, and then Abby was uh, was about to uh, and then Abby suddenly got got sliced in into her neck by the uh, by one of those. Uh, one of those uh, cutters that um, that Slick had brought in, yes, and then the, so then the hobo came to help and trying to go after one of them. I mean, I Ivan had escaped, but Slick, on the other hand, wasn't too lucky because yes, he got his dick blown off, you know, being wrapped up in in the in duct tape, and then he was. Yeah, until he was starting to make a phone call to the Drake to see where they are. But then telling them that, you know, I was your only son, but then he actually dies while being taken in by the school bus. It, it turns out that actually one of the kids were actually alive. You know, just all burned down and just took them straight into him and just killed him. Because he was already dying anyway. So, both the so Hobo takes uh, Abby to the hospital. Yeah, because she's already having that particular wound in her neck, being s sliced. So he has all these uh, doctors helping her recover. It only takes a while until yeah, she had a a 
long sleep, and then she woken up, and she's already uh, hoping she'll be alright. That is until the Drake sends out those uh, plagues, which that's where you see these two uh, iron metal uh, demons who about to go after the hobo and Abby. Yeah, the doctor just took the walker, slams it, and takes out a 44 Magnum, shoots one of them until. Yeah, one of the uh, the demons just uh, just took him and s stabbed him directly with a sword. Yeah, and then later took out those uh, free doctors. Yeah, two guys and a girl, and just uh, hook them up um, with a uh, rope into their necks and go straight into their ceilings. Yeah, and beats the shit out of them too. No, so they kidnap um, the hobo that the Drake wants and be able to take him directly to the street so that way they can perform a an entire show filled with the entire crowd of people yeah, with their guns uh, all the way around the entire building to, to go see them you know kill the hobo while Abby you know it suddenly takes um, his shotgun and so I had to go directly back to the pawn shop so I can get all the the equipment that she needs. So that way she can dress up, you know, bringing in the uh, the lawnmower and you know, taking out the shotgun, adding all this other stuff to make it more powerful. And that way she dresses up like like she's a warrior or something. Gives a speech to all the entire crowd, and then that's when he starts to go after them. Perfect. So it continues to go on. They try to save him, and as um, as they finally go after, you know, Drake as Rose Ivan, and all of that happened. Um, well, I'm gonna leave it at that. Uh, however, uh, the only thing I didn't love was um, the ending which is basically a downbeat ending where we begin to find out what happens to the hobo yeah cause you know in movies like this I mean you always have a feeling that the hobo is not gonna live so they have to go for a scene where he gets shot down by a bunch of a group of dirty cops and everyone around the entire groups of other people and Meanwhile, Hobo basically shoots um, the Drake uh, in his head, shoots uh, the Drake's head all blown up, everything. While um, Abby screams in horror, which you begin to find out what happens to Abby's uh, hand. He has the Drake uh, put uh, her hand directly to the lawnmower. That sucks. They even have an alternate ending, which is not even good either, where she becomes part of the plague. Uh, yeah. Boy, you know, J.C. Eisner really needs to come up with better endings, because this was not perfect. But other than that, though, I love the movie. I mean, this was fun. I mean, this was insanely cr crazy shit that they put in. A lot of graphic violence. You know, with all these uh, chest bursting, the uh, you know, body body crushing, um, intestines uh, coming out, uh, you know, all all these, uh, yeah, you know, exploding head, yeah, heads explodes, and you know, all you know, chopping out all these bodies, you know, burning them, and everything. I mean, it's it's insane. I mean, and it does play out like an exploitation film completely. They use all this Technicolor um, imagery. You know, you can see all these uh, a blend in of uh, some blue and orange uh, tints that they put in in several scenes here and there. I mean, it, it looks beautiful, wonderful. I mean, the cinematography was actually done by um, Kareem Wasson. So, got to give him credit for that, because uh, just Jason Eisner really knows what, what he was doing. 
You know, he wanted to make it look as as uh, colorful as ever. Um, the only thing that's missing, however, is all these film scratches, just to become more like like if it came in the seventies, but it didn't. So, but that's okay. Um, it still looks amazing. And Rector Howe was totally badass in this film. He was excellent in that role. I love his monologues that he gave. I mean, it reminded me of his monologues in other films he's done. He's very good at that. Uh, in fact, I love that monologue too where he was at the hospital. He, he spotted all these uh, newborn babies. And this is where he explains that, that if someday you will become in the future a, a lawyer or a doctor or anyone else but I hate to tell you this but that's not going to happen because you're going to end up like me if you're lucky it, or you're going to end up like one of these uh, drug lords uh, pedophiles pimps uh, and a crazy filmmaker who's just being the shit out of homeless people and all these other criminals around but if you end up like him You'll be a hobo with a shotgun to wipe out all of these people. But I know, I, I, of course, they always have the message that all of this with a shotgun won't solve anything, won't solve any messages, but like it won't change anything that's going to happen. But that's just what he thinks of it, what he'll do, and I mean. Well, that's how it has to happen in, in, these, um, in these terrible streets. Um, uh, Brian Downey was um, very was also very good too as uh, the crime lord, the Drake, with uh, Ivan and Slick. He had both played by Nick Bateman and Gregor Smith. Yeah, they were totally over the top, exactly what you expect. Um, yeah, and they got a lot of chicks around, yeah, very hot, I mean, yes, they even have ones that started being on, on a homeless man, you know, brutally, you know, with all these uh, sticks and, with all these uh, sticks around, and they're all topless, with their panties, and then they, they do a lot of sadistic stuff to them. But I guess that's just probably the whole message here about, you know, no matter what happens, I mean, no matter, I mean, you got to find a way to, to fix this uh, crap that's happening in the streets, you know, hoping to survive. But I guess you could say this is a sort of like a death wish in a whole different way. <laughs> Um, and of course, uh, Molly Dumworth as Abby. Yeah, she was. Uh, she's she's very attractive. Uh, she's very strong, very cute. Um, also sexy too. And she's. I thought she was the right choice to play the role. I mean, it's hard to believe. I heard she was number two. Out of all the uh, the casting choices for actresses around, <laughs> that's cool. I'm glad they picked her. Um, everyone else um, was great too. I mean, it, it was really cool that they even got the uh, the plays, which is known as Rip and Grinder. Yeah, which they they speak like monsters. I mean, inside after they took out the the hobo, you can even see the 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 entire um, mill where where he had the uh, somewhat of a an octopus that's uh, attacking all these other victims that they brought in and then the uh, Ivan was like <laughs> was like telling them while just while he was giving a smoke he was Hobo was just questioning him and well he says he wants to <laughs> I'm gonna do a, a comic book on on all my sick crimes and all that um, but it's it's really cool. Um, 
it really works well. It could definitely work as a double feature with Machete because I really love you know both of these movies and and I know Machete actually had a sequel too. <laughs> but I can see why Robert Rodriguez uh, loved the trailer and he wanted to put it in his film because it really works. Yeah. But and I think and it also worked too when when Rector Howell uh, got the role because David Brunt, uh, David Brunt uh, couldn't do it uh, because he had an illness that was going around. He didn't want this to, uh, to ruin his chance, but he thought maybe this would be better off if someone else would play him. So that's why they chose uh, Rector Howell because he has done like several of his work that's very similar to this role that he's playing. And, and you know what? It worked because I know uh, Rector Howe has played uh, several characters with a shotgun, so <laughs> it makes sense. So I'm glad he was chosen. The movie was not meant to be taken itself too seriously, though. That's the whole idea. It's it's, it's supposed to be what it is. So. I mean, I know they always go for the so bad it's good quality, but that's the idea. You know? Anyway. But anyway, check out Hobo with the Shotgun if you must. I mean, it's fun. It's it's definitely double barrel mayhem right there. And it's just filled with blood and guts all the way around. All done practical effects, by the way. No CGI blood. So now you know what they're doing. For a small budget, only $3 million. So perfect. Yeah. And it didn't make much though at, at the box office because it only had a uh, a small run, so but that's all right. But nevertheless, uh, Rector Hall will always be remembered. You know, he's a great actor, and he will be sadly missed. Thank you, Mr. Howe, for all your great work that you have done over the years. So anyway, that's Hobo with the Shotgun, and I give it. Four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.